Hello, this is Wendy again. Um, today I'm going to do a short but hopefully thorough video on how to tell if some of your food storage products are too old. And I get asked this question a few times a year. How do I know when my food is too old? And so today I'm going to talk particularly about things in cans. Okay. And this, is, this video comes about because of some things we discovered in our food storage in the past few days. So I have saved these so I can make this video. So first we're going to start out with the good. Okay, These are obviously commercially packaged products. Okay, This is your normal um, can we're all used to seeing. As you can see, there's nothing leaking. The seams are closed and the lid on top and the one on the bottom are still flat nice and flat no bulges okay and no big dents a small dent I per, uh, personally don't worry about but a really large dents it's okay to buy that but you need to use it soon okay so this one is perfect that's what we want to see this one as you can see is a number 10 can and it has also been commercially packaged and I say this because I personally have a bunch of things that I have packaged like this with a machine that I used at home. And as you can see, I have products from all different kinds of companies, so I'm not here to talk about individual companies or anything like that. This is just happens to be what I have. Um, this one has a freeze-dried product in it, or dehydrated. Same thing, this can is nice and flat on top, flat on the bottom looks great and something I have not done with this can yet is I try to be very good about putting the purchase date on the can in an obvious place either on the lid or somewhere right on the, the label and this one I bought recently I have not done that but this is what we want to see now I'm going to find show you some things that we found as you can see here this has a date um, this was purchased January of 2011 so seven and a half years ago and it might be hard to tell, but this can, it's hard to see in this video, it's bulging a little bit. I have some that are worse. And also, it is bulging on the bottom. This can rocks as it sits on the countertop. I've never come across this before, but um, I think I know the reasoning why this muffin mix, this is the same thing here, also bought the same year, and this muffin mix is doing the same thing. These, because they are a baking mix, they have leavening inside, which is either baking soda or baking powder. Now, up until a few years ago, most companies would not package these things with leavening inside because it was believed that it would cause the food to go bad. And um, if you ever purchase long-term food storage at the LDS home storage centers, they still to this day do not sell um, long-term foods such as pancake mix or other baking mixes in number 10 cans. You might be able to buy them in bags, but not cans. And their reasoning was because of the leavening inside, it would go bad. So, um, this is a great company. I buy their stuff all the time as of, you know, right now but something that I'm gonna have to do in the future is either not buy the mixes like this or use them before seven years even though on the back of the label it says that if it's stored in ideal conditions that these will be good up to 15 years now it's kind of hard to read but that's where I found that so obviously it's been half of that time and these have already gone bad so you live and learn. Um, so that's something I will have to use them faster, I think. If you have these, check, the, check them out and just use them faster. Now, in the meantime, over the last few years, I started to buy some of these products like pancake mix, our favorite pancake mix and such, in bulk, um, on sale. And then I had access at the time to a canner that would seal things in these cans. So I would do this by myself at home. My thinking at the time was, well, if the commercial businesses are doing it, why can't I? 
makes sense. These are things I go through all the time. So that's something I did. This one, it's a little hard to see, but it's just barely starting to bulge. So what I need to do is open this up and use it soon. Okay, it's rocking a little bit on the bottom as well. These I will throw away. This one's just starting. I'll open it up, smell it. If it seems like it's okay, I will use it soon. If it just smells off, rancid, I will toss. And then I'll recycle my cans. Okay. Um, here is another thing I have learned over the years. Some people might not be familiar with. This says potato pearls. I can these over seven years ago. Potato pearls, these in particular come from the LDS Home Storage Centers. They are wonderful. I highly recommend them. We use them several times a month. We go through a lot. But for some reason, this was probably in a case that was buried, and these did not get used. And the can looks good. Everything looks good. But something, um, if you don't use them a lot, you might not be familiar. These have a really short shelf life. And they are recommended to use between 18 months and two years. So these are seven and a half years old. I will open them off camera and I'm going to assume most likely they're gonna smell bad because they have an extra ingredient in there that makes them really yummy and makes them taste buttery. And they're really good, but you need to use them within two years. So these are probably going to go in the trash as well. And these, as you can see, is um, whole egg whole egg powder. These are great to use in recipes if you're short on eggs or you want to make up some mixes of your own. The thing about these is, I know by the label, I probably bought these 15 years ago. They look okay, but they don't smell that great anymore. And I know they're old. The problem is, is they'd probably be okay if I just opened this can, but knowing where they were and knowing that I don't use these very often, only in a pinch. These have been opened for several years. And a word of caution, a lot of these products will say somewhere on the label on the back, once you've opened the can, you need to use everything in that can within a year before it goes bad. And this is one of those products. So I will also dump this and next time I'm short on eggs or something, I will open up a new fresh can. So not only should we put the dates, the purchase date on there, but once we open them, especially something like this, we really, I didn't do it, but we should um, put the opening date on here, or opened and then the month of the year, so that we can, and then keep it somewhere handy in your pantry in the kitchen, so that you'll be sure to use it more often and it won't go to waste. So. For those who might be curious about what are ideal conditions, maybe you're new to food storage, the ideal conditions are somewhere where it's dark, um, low humidity, and that can vary depending on the part of the country you live in. I realize that. Let's say you live in Texas where it's humid and it's hot all the time and you don't have the most ideal storage location for foods like this that's fine you're going to do the best you can do but your shelf life on your products will most likely be shorter than someone who has perfect ideal conditions where it's always cool always dark low humidity and temperature um, the ideal temperatures for things like this is between like 55 and 75 degrees year-round Cooler is fine. You, If you live in Alaska or something and these are where they're going to freeze regularly, you might have a problem. But um, cool is good. 40 degrees is probably fine. So these are under ideal. So when you read the label and it says good for 15 years, that is under ideal conditions. If you don't have ideal conditions, you need to take into consideration your shelf life will be a lot shorter. And something I've learned from doing this is I personally and most of us need to do a better job of using the products we have and that's rotating them. Some people, if they're very new to food storage, believe that rotating means this. You're going to go down, find all your cans on the shelf, and turn them around. 
That is not what we mean by rotating your food storage. What we mean is the first things you buy are going to be the first things you use. And part of that is putting those dates on. And the second part is um, depending on the shelving system you have, you're either going to put the new stuff on the bottom or you're always going to put the new stuff in the back, just like the grocery stores do. Okay, so we need to use what we have and have what we use and do a better job of rotating it. And a couple times a year, this is what I do, right before a big um, case lot sale, I will go down to where I keep these things and I will go through everything and kind of tidy up because over time, you know, things get a mess like everything. So go in, tidy things up, throw away anything that looks very suspect, too old, spoiled, and make sure that you have your oldest stuff pulled forward or at the top and make room for your new stuff. And then I also use that time to write down things that I'm low on and then I use that to make my grocery list. And also, um, Another thing that I personally need to do is start an inventory of what I have. I'm terrible with that. So um, we're all at different stages of preparedness. And something I've, I'm good at buying things, I'm terrible about taking inventory. So that's how we came across this, was we just started to take a good inventory of what we have and check things out. And I feel like now is the time to find out things that you're doing wrong and fix the mistakes and maybe I have a whole case of something I have to throw away. It's sad, but I would rather find that now when I'm not relying on that for my everyday life and then I can replace it now and um, learn from, you know, learn lessons from what we're doing wrong or what we can do better. So go ahead and take an inventory so you can keep better track of what you have. It's kind of a daunting task at times, but it's you can always start with what you have today and then come up with a really good system to do better on that in the future. So I hope that this helped you to learn a little bit about how old is too old. Um, before I turn this off, um, people ask me about this kind of stuff all the time, things that we use frequently. I personally always, this can, for some reason, I just recently bought these Obviously, I did not put the purchase date on here, so I'm going to do that today and then put it back. But something I do is always look at the best buy dates. Here, for instance, this says best buy, uh, December of 2021. So I have at least three more years. So it doesn't say it expires or throw it out at that date. It says it's best buy. Keep in mind that over time, the older it gets, the less food value it will have. So you're not um, doing yourself any favors by just hanging on to it forever and waiting until it's six, seven years old because by then it's going to not smell right, not taste right. You're probably not going to want to eat it and your kids for sure won't want to eat it. And by then it has very little to zero food value in it. So um, I personally, when I once in a while come across one that's old and it's you know, I can tell when I bought it and it's been five years or more, I throw it away. It's 50 cents, maybe. Um, it's a cheap thing. I can replace it easily at this point in my life. And I'm not going to chance maybe getting sick. So, um, just some things to, to watch for. And it's good to at least twice a year kind of go through everything that you have and check it out and see what you need to improve on and go from there. So I hope this helped you in your food storage endeavors. Thanks for watching. Bye.